On July 4, 1994, Tropical Storm Alberto stalled over southwest Georgia, more specifically over the city of Albany. Massive amounts of rain fell in the area with Albany receiving 24 inches in just 24 hours. Due to the massive rainfall, the levees that held the Flint River were overpowered and caused severe flooding to the city. Tropical Storm Alberto caused the worst flood in Albany's history. The Flint River rose to its highest ever recorded level, reaching several miles wide throughout the city. In all this destruction, 14 people were killed and more than 20,000 people were displaced. Among the thousands of homes and the hundreds of businesses, the campus of Albany State was flooded all the way up to the second floor. The state supported a $150 million plan to renovate the campus and repair the storm damage. The significant water pressure from the flooding also caused caskets just to pop out of the ground, with some of them getting hung in trees going downstream, along with some of the livestock from the local farms. In 1994, I was only 10 years old. My recollection and experiences during this time greatly differ from some of my older relatives and family members. I do remember the water coming in. I do remember having to go to the attic without any of my belongings, just get up there and stay. I took the time out to interview my uncle, Mr. Kendrick, who was there and had a, played a very integral part in getting his family to safety. Let's hear from him now. Uh, Mr. Kendrick, I want to thank you for allowing me to interview you today about the great flood in Albany in 1994. When you hear July 4th, 1994, what, what kind of feelings do you get? What comes to your mind when you hear that? In hearing that, what comes to mind is how fortunate I was and am to still be around. Uh, that situation showed how fragile, even in a bad situation, how things can get worse. Uh, sitting and uh, watching as things got progressively worse, the feeling of comfort went to total fear. When you realize that, hey, this is not just going to be a regular little, you know, how sometimes the, fleet, the streets flood to the curb. When you realize, hey, this water is getting kind of high, it's coming under the door a little bit. How did you react? And, and how did your family react to that? Well, first I had to bring some sort of calmness to that. Then I had to really put my thinking cap on as to what are we going to do here? You know, because again, we we're looking at something that to me had different kind of situational things that could happen. There is, are we going to get out of here? Uh, what are we going to lose? Uh, who has the, uh, who do I work with first in terms of? Uh, trying to make Everything sure that they are safe. Uh, Having, hearing you mention the little ones and your loved ones, how hard was it to get, I mean, were you frantic? Or did you have to stay calm to keep them calm? Was everybody in a panic? Just, just kind of describe that whole scene. Like when the water, when you realize the water was coming into the house. Well, Naturally, being the head of the household, you want to be the one that's leading and showing uh, uh, some sort of uh, courage and know-how. And in this situation, the first thing was calming my kids as well as my wife and uh, letting them know that, okay, we're in a situation. However, we're going to be okay. And... Uh, Fortunately, they they bought into that, and uh, we were able to uh, set a plan because we realized that we were not able to take everything with us. Uh, it began to be one of those things that 
we were able to focus and say, what is important to even elevate within the house to be able to say, well, we'll take a chance on it being safe. Because we knew with uh, the way the water was rising and coming in that we didn't have much time. So we did the best we could, keeping uh, the focus of being together as a family and trying to get to safety with the help maybe of our neighbors and other people or the emergency uh, rescuers that were going to be there. How many, how many of your belongings, well I should ask that, um, were you able to rebuild what was damaged or did you have to move on after having to go all the way up to the attic to be safe? Well, with that much damage being done, um, there had to be a decision made where did we want to move on or did we want to take the chances of going through what uh, precautions that were given as helping individuals reestablish themselves. Being a native of Albany, we didn't want to leave. Uh, so we uh, made the decision to cope with the assistance that was going to be available and uh, took haven as we could until things started uh, getting uh, set up to, to rebuild. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you go after this one. I see it's kind of tugging at your heartstrings to remember all of this. But I just want to know, before this, did you have a fear of water? Did you develop a fear of water? Or, like, what changed What changed inside of you after this? How did you look at your city differently? Did you feel differently? Were you more humbled? Was it like, I know people say, hey, anything can happen, but... This is the prime example of anything can happen anytime, any day. Just how did you feel after surviving something like that? Well, early on in my life, I had fear of war, really, because of a tragic incident that occurred. As well as I never learned to swim, so that that made it even more trying for me. However. What I did learn is that in the midst of the storm, there's always a way to weather the storm. And that merely meaning uh, you can grasp for something that will carry you through. Now, am I humble? Yes, I am. Because uh, sometimes you can just visualize the worst. And somehow inner strength comes, inner faith comes, uh, and even your fellow man comes to your rescue to the point where you you feel that you are very blessed and fortunate. And if you ever experience anything that is traumatic, life-threatening, you will be a different person for a lifetime. And at this point in time, I feel that way, and it keeps me grounded. It keeps me thankful for the little things. Not so much as all these big things that I had or wanted to accumulate. So, yes, in, uh, in, in retrospect, in times that I reflect, I say, oh, how blessed and how fortunate I am as well as my family. All right, man, I really uh, appreciate you doing this for me and letting me interview you on such a trying time in your life. And uh, I appreciate it. Oh,